This video will cover how to install a Piano Disc Pro Record or Pro Scan system into your piano. The installation is the same for both systems, the only difference is in the setup, which we will cover later. This is the new Pro Record control box. It has several new features. It's now Bluetooth ready, has a new design that you can tilt up or down for better visibility, and a USB port on the front. There are also new optical key sensors and a redesigned harness cable as well. The first step is to remove the action from the piano. Then remove the stack and keys from the keyframe and place them upside down on a bench that is supported by two long pieces of wood to level the bottom of the keys. This is to prevent the keys from moving when you mark them later on. Locate the paper jig and reflective tape in the kit. Starting with keys 1 and 88, place the template on the front of the bottom of the key and place a mark at the 83mm line from the template. With all the keys upside down and leveled on two pieces of wood, place a straight edge across the end of all the keys to make sure their backs are aligned. Next, place a ruler across the bottom of the keys at the front of the 83mm marks, and then draw a line across all of them. With all the keys now correctly marked, place the reflective tape on them at the line just established. Place the optical sensor strip on the keyframe near the front rail and black keys at each of the mounting locations. Note, look at all the sensor positions on each of the black keys and determine the side-to-side -side placement of the key sensor rail. The sensors must be under each key. Place the sensor jig between the optical sensor of a sharp note and depress the key and check for proper clearance between the bottom of the key and the optical sensor. There should be a little amount of friction when you slide the jig back and forth. Use plywood or other material as a spacer to bring the rail up to maintain 3-4mm to four millimeters of clearance between the sensor and the bottom of the sharp key. Front punchings can be used as a final adjustment. Note, always use a sharp key to measure clearance as the key dip is closer on sharp notes. Continue to check the clearance at all the mounting locations. Next, secure the sensor strip to the keyframe with the screws provided. In some cases, it may be necessary to drill additional mounting holes in the sensor strip to line up the keyframe slats. If so, mark the places where the new mounting holes need to be. Take off the sharps and use a drill press to drill the new holes that you marked. Clean the other side of the hole with a Dremel tool or sandpaper so that the sensor strip will lie flat on the keyboard. Next, use a punch to mark and drill the mounting holes into the keyframe. Drill a 1 inch hole in the base section of the belly rail to snake the harness cable through. This hole should be drilled from the back of the belly rail and as far over as you can. Be careful not to drill into a locating pin, keybed screw, or damage the damper under lever tray. Feed the cable through when you are done. Note, if you are installing a piano disc and a pro record system at the same time, you will already be making a hole in the belly rail for other cables. Use this hole for the harness cable as well. Get the pedal stems and sensors from the kit. The sensor can be adjusted along the stem or even flipped around to fit different types of piano pedals. Note that the stem is oversized and will be cut later on. Each sensor has a felt spacer tab. Adjust the sensor so the spacer tab just clears the lever. Note that the pedal sensors need to be placed so that the lever moves away from the sensor. The best place for the sensors will be different for every piano and will be subjective to the technician. We usually place the sustain pedal sensor to the right of the pedal trap work and as close as you can to the pedal lever so that there will be about half an inch of room for the lever to travel. 
Once you find the ideal location, mount the pedal stem with two screws and place a piece of reflective tape under each of the sensors. After you're done, mark the pedal stem for cutoff, making sure to leave an extra 1 8 of an inch of stem beyond the sensor and remove it to cut. For the Sostenuto pedal sensor, we flip the sensor upside down on the stem, since the shift lever pedal sensor will likely occupy the area between the Sostenuto and sustain pedals. This limits our room so we place it to the very edge of the back side of the Sostenuto pedal. Once you find the ideal location, mount the pedal stem with two screws and place a piece of reflective tape underneath the sensors. After you are done, mark the pedal stem for cutoff, making sure to leave an extra 1 8 of an inch of stem beyond the sensor, and remove it to cut. As was mentioned in the previous section, the shift lever pedal sensor will go in the area between the sostenuto and sustain pedals. This position is usually the ideal place to put the pedal sensor because there isn't enough room between the sostenuto and shift lever. Once you find the ideal location, mount the pedal stem with two screws and place a piece of reflective tape under each of the sensors. After you are done, mark the pedal stem for cutoff, making sure to leave an extra 1 8 of an inch of stem beyond the sensor, and remove it to cut. Now that we've found the locations for the stems, we can cut off the excess length. Make sure to sand the edges smooth after you cut them. You can also use a permanent marker to darken the edges and the top. After you finish cutting the pedal stems, mount them back onto the piano and attach the sensor. Note, each pedal sensor has a paper ID attached to the plug indicating which pedal sensor to connect to. Carefully route the cables to the pedal sensors, making sure that the cables aren't hitting the pedal trap work. After you've determined where the pedal cables need to go, neatly tie them up. Try to get them as neat as possible, making sure that there aren't any cables hanging from the keybed. Select a location for the control box. It can be mounted on either side of the piano, however we recommend the left, as it is the side closest to the sensor strip connection. Make sure the control box is slightly recessed from the edge of the keybed. After selecting a location, mount the control box to the keybed using the mounting screws in the assembly kit bag. If your piano has a piano disc player system installed, use the piano disc slash pro record cable that is connected between the record port of the piano disc CPU unit and the extension port of the pro record unit. The extension port is located on the right side of the pro record control unit. If a piano disc system is not installed, use the 9 volt AC adapter on the back of the control unit. Secure all the wires with the ties and clamps that came in the assembly bag. Turn the power on. You will hear a chime through the piano disc system speakers and the play and record lights will alternately flash, indicating that the system is in initial setup mode. Play each note of the keyboard with equal force, making sure that each key goes to full depth. When each note is released, the note will sound slightly delayed, indicating that each key is calibrated. Now that the notes are done, press each pedal with equal force and to full depth. A chime will sound after each pedal is pressed, indicating that the pedal was calibrated. Note that the chime for each pedal will sound at a different pitch. After you are finished with the pedals, press the play button. If all the keys and pedals were successfully calibrated, a chime will sound and the play and record lights will stop flashing. First, turn ProScan on. At this point, the play and record lights on the front of the ProScan box should be alternately flashing indicating that the system is in initial setup mode. 
Unlike Pro Record, you won't hear any sounds when you calibrate ProScan. Play each note on the keyboard with equal force, making sure that each key goes to full depth. When you're finished with the keys, continue to the pedals and press each one with equal force and a full depth as well. After you are finished with the pedals, press the play button on the control box and the play and record lights will stop flashing. Now it's time to test the calibration. Since ProScan isn't equipped with a sound source, you will need to download two apps from the App Store, ProRecord and the iGrand Piano Free. Both apps are free, but iGrand will only work on an iPad. After both apps have finished installing, make sure your iPad's Bluetooth radio is on by going to the Settings app, then select Bluetooth, and make sure that the Bluetooth toggle is on. Next, open the ProRecord app and you will see a screen that will ask you to pick a connection method. Select Bluetooth and then ProRecord. Exit the ProRecord app, open iGrand and play a note on the piano. You should hear the note from your iPad speakers. If you don't, open Control Center and make sure that your iPad isn't on silent mode and that the volume is turned up. With iGrand working, play each note and pedal to confirm that they were calibrated correctly. Note, since ProScan will not send out a Bluetooth signal until after it has been calibrated, it is not possible to use iGrand during calibration. If a note or pedal needs to be recalibrated, simply turn ProRecord or ProScan off, then press and hold the play and record buttons and turn the power on. After three seconds, the two lights will alternately flash, indicating that the system has cleared the previous data and is in calibration mode. Press each key and pedal with equal force and a full depth. When you're finished, press the play button and the play and record lights will stop flashing and the system will exit calibration mode. Thank you for watching this video and we hope that you found it helpful. For more information on ProRecord or any other of our products, please check out our website at pianodisc.com.